Hi, hello! Today we're swatching all of my 11 lipsticks from Lisa Eldridge. I have accumulated quite a good amount of her lipstick rage. I, by all means, do not own all of her lipsticks, nor do I plan on doing that in the near future. But as it is, I have quite a few of her lipsticks and I thought it might be useful for you to do some lip swatches so that you can see how the lipsticks look like on my complexion on someone with my skin color. You've clicked on this video, so I will assume that you know who Lisa Eldridge is, but just in case you didn't, Lisa Eldridge is a renowned makeup artist. I will link her YouTube channel in the description box below. And several years ago, she launched her own uh, lipstick line. A number of these lipsticks were originally released as limited edition, but now you can just find them on her website, which is basically lisaeldridge.com, which I can also leave in the description box for you. She has fantastic customer service. She ships I think from different places around the world so I don't think anyone ever really needs to wait for a very long time to get their orders from her. I am based in the Netherlands and I think she has a warehouse here because my orders from her always arrive within like one and a half to two days. It is insane. So Lisa's lipsticks come in a variety of different finishes and I think I have representatives of all the three finishes that she has ever released but do correct me if I am wrong. I have three of her insatur insanely saturated lip colors. I have five of her true velvets and I have three of her luxuriously loosened lipsticks. All of her lipsticks come packaged in the exact same way. You will get this beautiful, very hefty gold vintage looking bullet. This, this whole packaging is an ode to vintage makeup, which is um, something that Liz is very intrigued by herself, which is why it's reflected also in the aesthetic of her brand. All of her lipsticks have her logo here on the cap and then depending on the finish that you are getting, some of her lipsticks also uh, visually look very interesting because in the case of her insanely saturated lips and her true velvets, you will notice that the actual bullet of the lipstick looks like it is enveloped by velvet. They are just so visually pleasing and so gorgeous to look at and not just to wear. Let's not focus too much on the introduction and just uh, swiftly proceed to lip swatching each of these colors. I'm going to start with the luxuriously loosened formula because those are the easiest one to remove. So what is this formula all about in case you've never experienced it? experienced it. So the luxuriously loosened lipsticks are basically, I think, her version of a buildable lip balm. I would not describe these as cream lipsticks, however, they are very buildable to the point that you can get a pretty like sheer cream type of lipstick finish, but they're by no means a saturated uh, cream lipstick if that's what you're looking for. They are basically a buildable lip balm, as I will also show you in a little bit, where we will just apply layers of uh, the same color so that you can see how they build up. A few words uh, I want to say about these lipstick the lipsticks. They are incredibly comfortable and they wear really gracefully throughout the day. Because of their buildable nature, you can basically wear them as a very lightly tinted lip balm or you can build up to be uh, quite opaque and quite shiny without being too shiny. And because they are also not overly creamy, they tend to stay pretty well within your lip lines. By comparison, a very similar formula that I have from Pat McGrath Labs is her uh, lip divinials. And the divinials are much more high shine and a little bit creamier, which um, unfortunately for me means that they tend to bleed around my lip lines quite badly. These don't do that. So you apply them in, you know, the coverage that you feel comfortable with, then you wear them out throughout the day. And what I feel like they do is as the day progresses, unless you reapply them, they kind of wear down to a little bit of a stain. And let's say you have like greasy food or you've had a lot of drinks, they will wear off. So you will have to reapply them a bit. But I find that they reapply pretty um, easily. They don't chunk up and build them build up on themselves in such a way that as to become uncomfortable. They're just one of the most comfortable, uh, user-friendly, buildable, lip-bound type of lipsticks that I have ever come across on the market. And it's no surprise that they're some of my favorite lipsticks to wear, especially when I'm feeling like a little bit of color, but I also want to keep it a bit more toned down because uh, her other two formulas are not about keeping it subtle. 
Okay, so the first lipstick that I'm going to demo for you is also the newest one in my collection. It was also released very recent recently. These only came out a couple of weeks ago. And this is the shade Meet Me in Berlin, which is like your classic brown nude. If you want to hear the coolest and most 90s story ever, which is also the background story of this lipstick, you should definitely go and watch Lisa Eldridge's reveal video of uh, the new lipsticks that were added to this line. I did FYI zoom you in a little bit. So here is Meet Me in Berlin in case you apply just one very sheer layer. You can see it adds a little bit of color to your lips without really turning too dramatic very quickly. So if you want, you can totally stop here. However, if you wanted more shine and more pigmentation, you can continue to build up without this ever becoming gunky or uncomfortable. So here we go. So here is Meet Me in Berlin in its full glory, a classic 90s brown nude. Nothing more to say about this lipstick. Next we have one of my older Lucens. This one was released uh, last year and this is in the shade Spirited Away. Which is a beautiful sort of like brick red rosy nude again beautiful one of my favorites as you can see I've already reached the logo of Lisa Eldridge onto the bullet. Here you have one layer of Spirited Away, which I think just adds a little bit of warmth, a little bit of like that warm brown nude to your lips. Now I'm going to build it up a little bit so you see how it looks like when it's a bit more pigmented. I adore Spirited Away. I just think it looks so incredibly flattering because it has those like warmer brick red tones to it. It looks gorgeous with everything. It is so incredibly comfortable. I cannot say enough good things about this color. As, as you can see, uh, what's very interesting about this formula is that it's very lip balmy and shiny, but without being too shiny. Like I said, the Diviners from Pat McGrath are much shinier compared to these. So these have a bit of a shine, but without being too offensive in that aspect. And last but certainly not least, we have another one of my absolute favorites, especially for the summer. This is the shade Atomic Cherry, which is a gorgeous coral red with slightly more orange undertones to it. Here is Atomic Cherry applied with just one layer. If you're scared of super saturated coral reds but you would really like to wear that color, this lipstick is the perfect solution for you. But I do have to say, because of the nature of the color, because these coral red colors tend to have a little bit more like a white pigment to them, this is not the most forgiving color if you have dry flakies and like your lips are very dry. If your lips are very dry, the pigment will attach a little bit unevenly on your lips and it will cling onto super dry patches on your lips. Um, it's not really bad, but I wanted to mention it for this specific color because I have noticed it happening a few times to me. Not recently, but that's because I take really good care of my lips, uh, but it can happen. Gorgeous lipstick. I love Atomic Cherry. She recently released another shade that is very similar to this. I don't have that shade. The shade is called Je ne sais quoi and it's part of her like newest addition to the luxuriously loosened line. Uh, but I don't have that color because it looks very similar to Atomic Cherry and one of my friends actually made the mistake of purchasing both. And I can tell you for a fact they are almost indistinguishably similar. I think Atomic Cherry is just slightly brighter and more orange toned whereas Je ne sais quoi is slightly more subdued. But they are pretty similar in color so if you are interested in uh, uh, these two colors make sure to do your homework so that you can figure out which undertone is best suited for you and preferably don't buy both because I feel like there is a chance you're going to feel like you duped yourself a little bit. And now that the easy to remove colors are out of the way let's switch on to the most difficult colors to remove and those are the insanely saturated lips. The insanely saturated lips are basically her true velvets which are like a velvet 
satin matte lipstick these are the cranked up version of those in terms of their pigmentation and like i mentioned i have three colors from that line i don't think that line contains too many colors as it is uh, but i only have three of them and i'm going to demo those for you i coincidentally have just watched this lipstick also in my previous video so i'm just going to start with that because it doesn't really matter in what order we're going to do this this is the shade skyscraper rose skyscraper rose is a fuchsia with bright red undertones I'm extremely untalented when it comes to applying these sort of bright lipsticks without a lip liner, which I'm not using today, so excuse the wonky lip lines. I'm just trying to show you more or less how these look like on the lips. I think because these are so saturated, they're going to look more or less the same on different people, although there could be minor differences in the undertones depending on the saturation of color that you have on your own lips. Um, but these lipsticks are obviously champions when it comes to uh, longevity because they are super pigmented, they cling on to the lips and they just kind of don't move from there unless you go and eat like a mega greasy hamburger or something. If you like go and literally have a spoonful of olive oil, maybe they're going to come out uh, where they've come in touch with the olive oil, but for the most part they will remain completely intact on your lips for the whole day. And they are also very comfortable to wear. They're not drying. I don't find them to be uncomfortable uh, throughout the day. I don't feel them throughout the day. They reapply very easily. So for being such a very highly pigmented formula, they're, they're actually quite easy to maintain. I love bright colors against my complexion. So you will notice that a lot of the, well, all of the satur insanely saturated lips that I have in my collection are in her brighter colors. And these are definitely going to be a bit more difficult to remove, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and scrub them a little bit with my uh, chamomile butter from the body shop. All right, I feel like I removed as much as I could from this color before moving on to the next one, which is one that I haven't actually demoed for you just yet. And this is the shade Rainbow Spill, which was part of her original insanely saturated lipstick release. This is a bright like watermelon pink coral shade. This is the best way that I could describe it. It is a very neon lipstick and I also mentioned in one of my previous videos that I still wasn't sure how I felt about it, but uh, let me put it on and then you can tell me in the comment section whether you think it suits me or not. So here is Rainbow Spill for you. I look a little bit like a traffic light. This lipstick is just so incredibly bright. I do find it very flattering against, I think, most people's complexion because it has very warm watermelony undertones to it. It's not like a cool tone pink. It's much more of a warmer pink. It has a lot of yellow in it, which is, I think, what makes it uh, so incredibly flattering in terms of its undertone. But I do have to warn you, because of the nature of this lipstick, again, like those more pinky, corally shades, which contain a little bit more of white pigment, um, this one, again, tends to be just a little bit less forgiving if your lips are very dry, because it can cling to dry patches and it can settle just a tiny bit in uh, your lip lines. It's not too bad, though. I have to say, for a color like this, in this specific formula. This lipstick is quite the champion in uh, performing really well and feeling relatively comfortable on the lips. I do find this shade to be slightly more drying compared to the other two shades that I have uh, from this line, but overall for what kind of color it is, I think it is the best that you can get. And here comes my favorite out of the tree because I am a sucker for red lipstick. This is again one of the newer releases in this line and this is the shade Strawberry Shock, which Lisa Eldridge describes as a filtered red. It is a beautiful, more subdued tone of red with slightly like watermelony tones to it, like strawberry watermelony tones to it, and it is just gorgeous and I am obsessed with it. This lipstick is coming on holiday with me.
without a doubt my favorite out of the three insanely saturated uh, lips i just absolutely adore this shade of red because it is also a very unique shade uh, something that i wanted to add about the uniqueness of lisa aldridge's lipsticks she has the best and most engaging way of describing her lipsticks and uh, making them sound extremely unique on the market but when you go back down to the basics and you swatch them against other lipsticks because let's face it the makeup market is so incredibly saturated that pretty much all the colors have been done and redone it is very difficult to invent new colors but i think what really sets um lisa's lipsticks apart from everything else is not just the colors but also the finish and the way they look on the lips they tru truly look like velvet on your lips they have a little bit of like that silicone slip feel to it so they uh, filter that they look like a little bit of a filter on your lips so they smoothen your lips and they just look so incredibly beautiful on the lips uh, while not always being a very unique color that's not the case with a strawberry shock strawberry shock is a very unique color in my collection i've never seen anything quite like it it retains those neon qualities to it without being offensively vibrant i don't know how else to describe it if you're a youtuber and you have to do lip swatches that stuff from the body shop is magical it just takes everything off without making your lips bleed. And finally, the remaining five lipsticks that I would like to showcase for you are all in her True Velvet formula. So those are very similar to the insanely saturated lips, but they're just not so insanely saturated. They still have the same qualities. They're quite pigmented. They have this smoothing effect on the lips. They look like um, velvet on the lips, but they are maybe just slightly less punchy compared to the insanely saturated lips. So in no particular order, I'm just going to grab colors and swatch them for you. The first color that I grabbed is the shade Cinnabar. And Cinnabar is a beautiful brown cinnamon goodness. I love this lipstick. Personally, I didn't really have a color like this in my collection and Lisa made it sound like it's a very unique color. But from what I understand from a bunch of my friends who have more extensive like MAC collections, MAC actually has a similar color to this. But without further ado, let's just swatch Cinnabar. The most perfect autumnal color. This shade just has a little bit of brown, a little bit of red, a little bit of orange in the most perfectly balanced autumnal shade ever. I adore Cinnabar. Every time I pull out for it, I'm always amazed at how flattering and beautiful it looks. And Ooh, the next shade that I grabbed is another one of those lipstick shades that I would truly describe as quite unique to Lisa Eldridge's lipstick collection. And that is the shade Velvet Dragon. Dragon is the most interesting red with very strong yellow undertones to it. It has those beautiful, like almost like cinnamony red, very like orange based red tones to it with a bit of yellow and a bit of subtlety to it. I don't know how to describe this color, but this one is truly unique. While I would describe the True Velvets to be pretty consistent in terms of their formula and how they feel on the lips, I do find that there are some minor differences. Uh, for example, I find this shade, the shade Dragon, to be just slightly more drying compared to some of the other lipsticks that she offers in this range. But by drying, I mean just like 10% more drying and I'm totally willing to suck it up because the color is so incredibly beautiful. Ooh, next we have grabbed a very, very vampy shade, the deepest shade that I have in the Velvet line and also a very unique one to my personal collection and that is the shade Velvet Decade. Velvet Decade is like molten dark chocolate on your lips. It's incredible. Well, with this color, my wonky lip lines are more apparent than ever, but the color itself is absolutely sublime. 
With that said, it is also the most high maintenance color that I have of all of my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. It wears relatively well, it is quite comfortable, but it is a more vampy color and throughout the day it can get quite patchy. So that is something that I have noticed about this lipstick, that uh, it looks quite okay for like the first few hours, but then throughout the day, even if you don't really consume much food or drinks, it can get quite patchy. And in my experience, because I wear this uh, throughout the day when I go to work, so I wear them anywhere from 8 to 10 hours a day at least, uh, in my experience, the best way to approach this lipstick once it starts to get patchy is to actually remove most of it, to like blot it all away until you only have a little bit of a stain from the original color and then apply a light layer of that, almost like a stain, uh, because I feel like throughout the day your lips will get a bit drier and unless you want to in between also apply some sort of balm to soften your lips, reapplying this lipstick to its full capacity can feel quite uncomfortable on the lips. So I'm warning you, I love the shade and I do wear it a lot including to work, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that this one requires a little bit more maintenance throughout the day. Next I grabbed for the most nude color that I have in the True Velvet line and that is the shade Velvet Affair. Velvet Affair is just a gorgeous mid-tone, camel-toned brown lipstick. It's a very beautiful, it's not too pink, it's not uh, too 90s brown, it's just very perfectly balanced and it has a little bit of those warmer camel tones to it and I really love browns which have those undertones, so I really really enjoy the shade Affair. The reason I chose a fair in comparison to a lot of her other more popular nude lipstick, lipsticks uh, in the True Velvet line was that I was actually a little bit afraid that the others are just too nude and too much concealer lips for my taste and this one just hits all the right notes, it's not too nude, it's not too deep, it doesn't have too much of like pink tones to it. I have a lot of like uh, pink toned browns and I was just looking for something a little bit different and I think this shade is also another one that I would describe as more unique in her lineup. And last but certainly not least and not that I really planned it that way but just coincidentally we are going to end with a bang, we are going to end with my personal favorite Lisa Eldridge lipstick of all time and that is the shade Velvet Ribbon. And you might consider this shade to be an interesting choice to be my favorite because uh, it is probably not a very unique shade, it's a classic red. It's a classic red that's not too uh, pink toned, it's not too uh, warm toned, it's just your basic bitch blue based red. But I just think that there is something very special about this lipstick to me personally. And that's coming from someone who likes red lipsticks and has a lot of favorite red lipsticks. I think this one is the queen of them all. Is she not perfection? I dare you, come and tell me to my face that this lipstick is not the queen of all the red lipsticks out there. I want to also throw in, because I mentioned that there are subtle differences uh, between the, the lipsticks even within the same formula. While it is in the same, you know, velvet matte formula, it has a little bit more of like a satin quality to it, a little bit more of creaminess to it, which makes it even more comfortable than a lot of these other colors are. A lot of these other colors could get a little bit drying over the course of the day and I never have that feeling with Ribbon. Ribbon is the lipstick that I would recommend if you, you know, were ready to take the next step uh, going from something like Atomic Cherry, stepping it up from something like Atomic Cherry which is a bit more sheer and like a balm to something that is more saturated and more of like a statement bold red lip color, I would say go for Ribbon because it will not let you down. It is so, such a reliable color. You will not ever feel like you need to uh, check your face every five seconds to see if the lipstick is there, if it has worn out in a very unflattering way, you'll put it on in the morning, you will have fries, you will have drinks and maybe you'll have to like rub it a bit in the center of your lips to like make it a bit more homogeneous with the rest of your lips but for the rest you might not even have to touch up this lipstick until the end of the day when you want to take it off. That is how incredibly long-lasting and reliable it is. And because of those classic red undertones, it's going to look flattering on everyone. So, you know, 
if you wanted to dip your toes in true bold statement red lipstick get yourself a velvet ribbon from lisa eldridge and trust me you will not regret it that's it you guys congratulations to you congratulations to me and for my lips for surviving this uh, lip swatch party we have made it to the end we have swatched all of the 11 lipsticks that i own from lisa eldridge currently overall really consistently reliable lipsticks across the different formulas that are just presented beautifully in the most gorgeous vintage gold packaging before we part ways uh, let's swoon at the shade ribbon one more time i'm actually going to go and purchase myself a little bit of a monolid seduction palette because it is releasing in about 10 minutes from now at least the uh, early vip access and i cannot wait to get my hands on it thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was helpful do let me know uh, which ones were your favorites, which ones your, were your favorites on me, which ones are your favorites on you, because I know a lot of you probably already have a pretty substantial lipstick collection from Lisa Eldridge, if not the whole range of lipsticks. Um, thank you so much for watching, and we will see each other again very, very soon. Bye! Bye.